Okay, so we will get started. Started. Welcome, everybody. Um, My name is Chantel Gertan, and I am part of the team that creates content here at MedCan. And I am really excited for today's webinar. It's called The Future of Skin Care. And we're here with Dr. Jonathan Levy, who's a dermatologist and the medical director at Refine by MedCan. Um, So, uh, you know, my background is actually working in beauty as a beauty editor in magazines and on TV. And so uh, I love this topic. So I think this is going to be so great. But I feel like everything is always changing with skincare and ingredients and the latest treatments. So we thought it would be really a great um, time as people are in summer and you know, you kind of take a break from everything to look towards the rest of 2021 and kind of what's coming up uh, in skincare. So I will just uh, read Dr. Jonathan Levy's bio. He is a board certified dermatologist in both Canada and the United States. He is also a diplomat of the American Board of Dermatology. Dr. Jonathan Levy has published research articles in several peer-reviewed journals and has presented his research at local, national, and international conferences. Dr. Levy is a member of the Canadian Dermatology Association, American Academy of Dermatology, American Society for Dermatologic Surgery, Toronto Dermatology Society, and Ontario Medical Association. Welcome, Dr. Levy. Thanks, Chantel. Thanks for the kind intro. Um, and hi, everyone. I wish we could be doing this in person, but um, this works too. And now you could be sitting at home or up at the cottage and, and don't have to come all the way down. Um, so yeah, today we'll be talking about skincare, the future, and just, you know, sort of what's the current state and um, what, what are some of the sort of the options and new treatments that we have out there. Yeah, so we thought we'd just start with the first slide, which is the current state of skincare. So Dr. Levy, why don't you just kind of talk about where we've been in the last two years? So yeah, I mean, obviously things have been different for the last year and a half or so now with the pandemic. Um, a lot of places were closed. I mean, we, we closed for a couple months back in you know, March till May of last year. We've been open since for over a year now, but a lot of the cosmetic treatments we just weren't able to do. Um, and so, you know, we have this here, the pandemic forced minimalism, um, where we just weren't able to do a lot of the in-office treatments. Obviously you can still have your skincare routine at home, um, but doing some of the Botox and filler and different lasers, um, facials, that sort of stuff, it just wasn't an option. Um, now that we've, you know, we're getting out of COVID, hopefully, um, and things are opening up again, we're able to start doing these treatments again. Um, and, you know, in terms of post pandemic, you know, we were out here less is more. And what we're implying by that is that you don't always have to get, um, you know, you don't have to go overboard with treatment. Um, sometimes just doing something subtle, just giving off, uh, a nice refreshed look um, can give you great results. Um, so for instance, I think if we go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is kind of our first prediction. Yeah, um, you know, so tweakments. Um, I don't know if that's a real word, but we're gonna use it here. And um, so here, we're, you know, what we mean by tweakments are just small adjustments to your skincare routine that they'll like make you look refreshed, relaxed, rejuvenated. So. The goal is that, you know, when you see someone, they're not, you know, what did you have done? It's more, you look refreshed. Um, and that's the goal that we have here at Refine. Um, I'm here, there's four other dermatologists. We have two estheticians. There's Tanya and Leslie, you may have met them. And, you know, our goal is just subtle um, changes. So in terms of that, so let's say like a liquid facial. So that's more of our injectables, like say Botox or filler. So for filler, um, Sometimes, you know, no one wants to have a fake look. No one wants to, not no one, but a lot of people don't want to have, you know, big lips or big cheeks type of thing. And um, you don't want people, sometimes you just don't want people to notice, you know, that you had all this work done. So sometimes just doing one or two syringes of filler can get that desired effect um, versus using four syringes. Now, sometimes people do need that to get the desired effect, but not always. And then there's other things that can give you a nice result without going overboard. So sometimes we have a device here that uses RFs, that's radio frequency. 
So that's like a laser per se, not quite, but it's a radio fr frequency device and that can help tighten and plump the skin. And there, you know, there's no injectables, so there's no needles. Um, so less painful, less marks. Hydrofacials, so um, we have a device here called a hydrofacial and that just gives, um, it, it's just a, it gives a nice glow, um, makes your, fins, uh, your skin feel nice. Um, and then lasers, we have a whole bunch of lasers here. Um, and so sometimes you might think, oh, you know, I get laser, you know, I'm gonna be all red and I'm not gonna be able, I gotta, you know, take a week off of work or something like that. And with some lasers, that's the case, but we have lasers where there is no downtime. So for instance, there's clear and brilliant. So clear and brilliant is like a baby Fraxel. It, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a gentle resurfacing laser. So you'll be a little bit red the rest of the day. Um, nothing too much and maybe for a day or so, but you can sort of carry on and it's going to give a nice glow, um, get nice skin texture. Your skin just kind of looks good and feels good. Um, and that's something that could be done, you know, maybe every six months. Sometimes you'll do a couple sessions up front. You know, you do one a month later, a month after that. And, you know, no real downtime. IPL, that's a different laser. So that one there, that's more for targeting redness or brown spots. So if you, someone that has a bit of say rosacea or just rosy cheeks, if you get flushing, you know, more in the cheeks here, but it could be all around on the face or someone with more lentigine. So those are sunspots. That's just some sun from over the years where you can have some brown spots. Sometimes they're bigger. Sometimes it could just be kind of scattered all around on the face. And that works to target both the redness or the brown or both. And um, usually we do a few sessions of that and that works pretty well. No downtime. I've personally done the IPL. Um, I've actually done both lasers. I like to try everything out. And um, the IPL, I do that at lunchtime, you know, and I'll be seeing patients in the afternoon. And this is even pre-pandemic, you know, when I wasn't wearing a mask and no one would even know. No one's like, what did you just have done to your face? It, there really is zero downtime with that. And right now, like given that it's summer and you're, you know, going outside more, should you wait to do IPL into the fall? Because does it make your skin susceptible to sun damage afterwards? It's not so much. I mean, you want to kind of avoid the sun a little bit afterwards, not avoid in the sense of you can't be outside, just more good sun protection because your skin's a little more sensitive. But we actually wait to do IPL not in everyone, but in a lot of people will wait till the fall or winter because you don't want a background tan because the IPL, as I mentioned before, targets um, brown pigment. So if you're really tanned, if you're outside a lot in the summer um, and you have a bit of that background tan, the laser then can't differentiate, say, your brown sunspot or even the red marks from the background tan. So you'll wait, you know, ideally you wait until you don't have that tan. So some people are great. And, um, you know, if you don't, if you're really avoiding the sun, even in the summertime, um, then you don't have to wait till the fall or winter. Um, interestingly, about a year and a half ago, just before COVID hit, I went and I worked at um, a laser clinic in uh, San Diego, one of the top three places in the States. And San Diego, I mean, they got perfect weather. It's sunny there all year round. So like, what do you tell someone? Wait until the winter? I mean, their winter is like our summer. So <laughs> you know, sometimes again, like, yeah, you could still do it in the summer here. It's just be smart about it, you know? You know, don't get a tan, you know, the week or two prior to treatment and be good in the sun afterwards too. Right, well, we have a benefit then because probably you get better results because we do have that option. Exactly. Um, before we go to the next prediction, I just wanted to mention to anyone, if as we go through this, you have questions, feel free to just put them in the chat. We'll go through, we have three different predictions. We'll go through those and then we'll take questions from anyone. So you can just type them in there and then we'll look at them at the end. Great. Okay, so this is just a quote from you. Um, the goal yeah. isn't for someone to ask what you've had done and you sort of spoke to that. Exactly, you just you want someone to say, you look good, you look refreshed. You know, you don't want them to say, well, what did, you know, did you get something done here or there? Um, so yeah, that's a sort of kind of general, um, you know, dog mice or, you know, yeah. you know what we yeah. want. All right, so prediction, prediction number two, camera shy skincare. Uh, so I, I sort of, you know, we talked about this, the camera shy 
in the idea that as we shift to being at home, like, you know, things that, as you were saying, don't need downtime, there are some, some sort of treatments that do require downtime. So why don't you speak kind of to that and why that might be a time now to do that? Yeah. So, I mean, people, I mean, depending on what your job is, some people have a little more flexibility with going into work versus staying home. So if you do have that flexibility, you say, hey, I can kind of not go out for a week. Um, then there's some other treatments that might be more amenable to you now. So for instance, there's something called a vampire facial. So that's microneedling. Usually we'll do that more for kind of under eye um, cheeks area, but could be done all over on the face. And what that is, so it's microneedling. So just, you know, tiny little needle sort of thing. Um, and that's gonna cause a bit of redness. And then we do PRP. What PRP is, we actually, it's used for many different things. I mean, outside of dermatology, that's used sometimes someone just as joint pain. What they do is they draw a little bit of blood. Um, so, you know, just a little IV, they take a little blood done there, and then they have the vial. And then we put that in a centrifuge and we spin it down for a few minutes and that isolates the growth factors that's in the plasma. And then we can inject that back in. So in, in this case, say a vampire facial, we do the microneedling and then apply the, um, the plasma with the growth factors on top of the skin. Um, but that's gonna cause a bit of redness. You're gonna have downtime for a few days. Same goes with the CO2 laser. So CO2 carbon dioxide laser, that's a resurfacing laser. That one, it's not, we don't use that one as much. That's more for if you have more, um, some wrinkling of the skin, more sun damage, you know, just from over years and years. And that one there can really help smoothen out the skin. So if there's a bit of wrinkling, creepiness, um, that's going to, you know, just um, even things out a bit and help with the wrinkling there. But there, downtime, I mean, that's going to be red for one to two weeks. Um, but it's also, you kind of not pay for what you get, but uh, it's, it's sometimes like no pain, no gain. So with that one there, even though there's more downtime, you're going to get more dramatic results compared to say a clear and brilliant. Um, so, and then vascular lasers. So that's treating more blood vessels and stuff. So I mentioned before the IPL can do that, but when people have more, um, bigger broken blood vessels, um, then we can do the vascular laser. We have one called an XLV here. And that one, they're not necessarily, you don't necessarily have downtime with it, um, but it could cause a little bit more redness, sometimes bruising. So they'll say, yeah, expect to be red for, you know, a couple of days afterwards, but not always. So you talked about the vampire facial treating the under eye area and the cheek. So what is it actually doing? And why is that area a great area to treat? So the thought is microneedling in general, what it's doing is it's making all these little micro injuries in the skin and that kind of stimulates collagen production and elasti elastin, which is like our elastic tissue production to help sort of plump up the skin um, and, um, and do that. And then the whole idea with the PRP is there's all these growth factors. So it kind of just uh, has the synergistic effect. And so people like it here because it, it puts back volume that you lose as you age. It can give a little bit of volume too. And then also if there, you know, if someone has more, say, dark circles under the eyes or a little sagging there, it can help with that too. Um, okay. The other thing we do too for under eye is let's say, and this is more something that we're doing more over the last couple of years is under eye filler. So if you have bags under your eyes, there's different treatments depending on on you, you know, on what it looks like. So if there's more, a little bit of hollowness or like a little bit of a depression there, a volume loss, if you will, under the eye, then you'd be a good candidate to do filler. Whereas if someone has more, if there's just a lot of excess tissue, that's a different story. Then sometimes you need to see a plastic surgeon, you do something called a blepharoplasty, which is where they just cut, a, cut out a little bit of the excess skin. Or sometimes there's little fat pads here that kind of stick out and they can cut those out too, um, just to give a you know tighter skin appearance there. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go to number three. So we're calling this one Hype Free Beauty. So you wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so in, in terms of just overall skincare, um, you can probably Google or read about, there's tons of different ingredients out there 
like, well, there's, re I mean, here we list a few, say retinol, AHAs, antioxidants, those are broad categories. But then, I mean, there's, it seems like every week or month, there's a new, you know, hot ingredient that's being used. And some of those are, some of them are great. Some of them, they might not do so much. And sometimes it's just, it's, you just want to kind of stick to, you know, the tried, tested ones. So retinol. Um, so retinol is a vitamin A derivative. So it's a cousin of vitamin A that helps increase cell turnover and collagen production. Sometimes it can even help a little bit with pigment too, but that's a smaller component of it. Um, it can also help with fine lines. So there's different concentrations of retinols that you can use um, for the over-the-counter ones. Like, let's say we sell the Zeto, the Zeto Baji. It starts at 0.3%. They have another one that's 0.5% and then the 1%. So your skin kind of gets used to it over time, but it could be a little bit drying and irritating at first. So I would say start off with the 0.3% and then over time can work your way up to the 0.5 um, and all the way up to the 0.1. It doesn't mean you have to go up to the higher concentrations, but you know, retinols are, I mean, that's something that I think most people should be, or that it's, it's something that should be in most people's skincare routine, something you could put on at nighttime, you moisturize afterwards. Um, and then, you want to put that on at night, right? Because it will make your skin sensitive. Is that true in the daytime? It can or make your skin more sensitive. Also, some retinols, they can be broken down by UV exposure, so by the sun. So if you put it on in the morning, it's just less efficacious. It's just not going to have its desired effect. And if someone's starting out, do you recommend how often are they using retinol per week? So you, you could use it up to every night, but at first it's probably going to irritate your skin a little too much. Whenever I give someone, you know, prescribe it or um, recommend a retinol, I always say start off just every, maybe every three days, twice a week, do that. If you're, and you know, if you're, if it's still causing a little bit of like redness or dryness, irritation, okay, that's enough, right? Maybe even go to once a week. Um, but as long as you're tolerating it, then you can go and do it more often. So then you can work your way up to every other night or every night, but it's not like say birth control, but like if you miss it one night, okay, it's no big deal. It's still going to work fine for you. Right. I find sometimes like with my friends, you know, if we try a new one and we talk about it, if there's somebody starting one, they'll say like after two days, like I'm not seeing any difference and they start using it every day. But I feel like it takes a couple of days before you start to see the flakiness and then you're like, oh no. Right. And then, like, yeah. And then it's too late. <laughs> and then you got a few days of the redness and flakiness. Yeah. Yeah. And if that ever happens, I mean, then, you know, just moisture, hold off, don't use it, wait till everything goes back to normal and just moisturize, you know, a few times a day and everything will go back fine. You're not gonna get any scarring or anything like that. All right, AHAs. So AHAs, that stands for alpha hydroxy acids. There are different types of hydro, um, acids. So you have your BHAs, AHAs, and then there's um, other ones too. So an example of an AHA would be glycolic acid. So you've probably heard of glycolic acid, many different brands will make a serum toner or cream that has glycolic acid in it. And this can help just give, um, it exfoliates the top layer of the skin. So it kind of, you know, gets rid of that top layer. So it can help a little bit with oiliness and greasiness and just gives a nice um, tone and texture and glow to the skin. So that's something that can be added in at night too. It might, I mean, if you're starting from scratch, you haven't done any of this. I mean, I wouldn't start with a retinol and say a glycolic acid, you know, at the same time, you know, make sure, you know, cause both of them can cause a bit of irritation. So make sure you're tolerating one okay. And then you can add the other one in, you know, start every few nights. And then antioxidants. So what antioxidants do is they damage, um, or it's not damage, they defend um, against damage um, um, against the skin um, where there's free radicals. So free radicals, pretty much they're, um, there, that could be produced safe from just our environment. So safe from just pollution in the air and that can be damaging to our skin. So examples of antioxidants, there's vitamin C, vitamin E, um, there's niacinamide, fruitolic acid. So I'd say the most popular product, not just refined, but you know, anywhere would be the SkinCeuticals product. It's called CE Ferulic. 
So C is because it has vitamin C, E has vitamin E, and then ferulic, it has ferulic acid. All three of those are antioxidants and it's you know mixed into one product. An antioxidant is something you'd put on in the morning because again, you're trying to you know, prevent damage just from your sort of day-to-day -day exposure, just, you know, to the environment, to life sort of thing. So there you just put a, you know, three, four drops on, you rub it around all over your face. Um, it dries within a second sort of thing. And that's something for the morning. Whereas the retinols and HAs are usually you'll do those more at nighttime. So this is where I'm going to jump in because one thing I find bothers me is when that you can go into the drugstore and the drugstore now carries a lot of great brands, but a lot of times it's like, they just have like a splash of one of these ingredients mm -hmm. and they don't tell you how much is in it. And it feels to me, that's where I would like hype, you know, because it's always, you're seeing the advertisements for a lot of these big brands or whatever's trendy, but they're not doing anything. So I, I, I'm not, I don't work that much yet. So I'm not going to say like, get a kickback here. But I think when you go to the dermatologist instead, and you get these higher end brands that are not available, just like to grab off the shelf for $5, it's, they, it's worth it because they actually work. So spend a little more, you don't need that much product. And you see a difference. I love that CE Ferulic. I yeah. feel like that is my splurge, but it works. Exactly. And the thing is with these ones, you know they work. And the other ones, they, the $5, the $15 one, $50 one, they can work just fine too. But sometimes depending on the brand, you don't know what you're getting or you don't know the, there could be vitamin C, but how much? Maybe it's just like splash of it and it's really not, you know, it's having more of a placebo effect. It's not, uh, you know, doing anything. So yeah, with these ones, you know what you're getting. Um, other ones too, it's not like it's specific just to these brands by any means. Yeah, you have quite a few different brands at Refine, right? We just yeah. we just picked out some of the popular ones, but um, you probably yeah, suggest. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we if you ever come in, I mean, for those of you that have been here or those that haven't, when you come into reception on the right side, there's we got a whole wall of all the different products that we sell, and you know we have knowledgeable staff that can give you information. Whether it's the dermatologist, we have two skin consultants so we have Petra and there's Kelly as well and I mean they know every last detail about all this stuff so um, even if you don't have an appointment just pop in you can ask a couple questions the receptionist they know a ton about this as well so yeah just come by sometime and we can show you the different products we have I love that and that actually ties to our next slide um which is one of your points that like a lot of times you can't go into a dermatologist office without an appointment and then get a cons consultation. But that's the nice thing about we're fine. It, you know, it's right at street level. You can just come in, somebody can help you. Um, exactly. So what, yeah, talk a little bit about the other things um, because I think some people don't know we're fine is sort of a hidden secret, so. Right, so um, just going through here. So custom consultation. So, I mean, everyone has different skin and everyone has different goals. So, you know, different skin. I mean, someone can have oily skin or dry skin or mixed. Um, someone, you know, whether you're 20 years old or 80 years old, you know, you might have more or less sun damage. Um, so there's, there's different factors at play here um, in different treatment goals. So depending on what type of skin you have, you know, do you have more redness? Do you have more, sen you know, do you have sensitive skin versus you don't really have sensitive skin? Do you wear more makeup and you need something to go underneath that, that it's not gonna, you know, cause, you know, where this makeup will still go on nicely. So, um, you know, it's good to have that consultation with someone where they can see, okay, what type of skin do you have? What are your goals here? And then they can come up with, a, you know, a personalized treatment plan. Um, and so, and that also goes just with, you know, lifestyle and budget too. So, you know, whether you just want to go with a product, um, do you want more, do you want a facial? Do you, we have, uh, you know, there's the hydrofacial. Do you want microneedling? We have laser, there's Botox fillers. There's, there's lots of different options um, in terms of um, what we can do. And even, you know, as we were mentioning before, I mean, someone could have, you know, some bags under the eyes and that could be treated, say, with the vampire facial, with microneedling and PRP, or maybe we do filler, or maybe you just start off with an eye cream. And we have some great eye creams too. So it just depends on, you know, how aggressive you want to go with treatment, um, 
and also just personally what things look like. Um, we're always available to talk over the phone or in person. So as mentioned, there's the dermatologist here. You know, you want to see us, you can book an appointment. It's, you need a referral to see the dermatologist. Um, of course, if you've seen it before, you can come in for a follow-up visit. Don't always need a referral to the same issue. Um, but Kelly and Petra, who are skin consultants, they're here, they're here all day, every day. And you can make an appointment with them, but if you just want to sort of pop in, if they're free, they're happy to, you know, sit you down and sort of discuss, you know, what your goals are and what the different treatment options are for that. The other thing is, um, so Refine, we are under the MedCan umbrella. We are, um, you know, part of MedCan, um, but you don't need a MedCan membership to be seen at Refine. So if you have any family or friends or, you know, someone who is interested in coming, they don't need that MedCan membership. You do get a discount um, pretty much on the treatments, um, like pretty much on all the treatments and, um, and, and some of that stuff. Um, if you are a MedCan member, but you don't have to be a MedCan member if you see. So, okay, that was great. So I'm just gonna stop sharing there and um, see if we have um, any questions. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or in the, in the questions area. Um, while we just wait, if anyone has one, uh, I have a question. So uh, I thought, find that at the beginning of the summer, I really am cautious about what kind of sunscreen I'm choosing for my face, my body. And then we get to this point in the summer, you're sort of running out and you're just grabbing like whatever sunscreen you can find off the shelf. But so I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about like, what are we supposed to be looking for in a sunscreen? Like what's the difference between that chemical sunscreen and the mineral sunscreen and the, you know, ideal levels of SPF uh, coverage in them? Sure. Um, so yeah, a few questions there. So difference between chemical and physical is, and when people say mineral, mineral and physical, that's the same thing. So there's mineral, physical sunscreen and chemical. So a chemical sunscreen, that's um, what, how that works is the active ingredient, when the UV radiation from the sun hits your skin, the sunscreen absorbs that UV radiation and it emits that energy as heat and it's the heat just dissipates. That's how a chemical one works. A physical or mineral blocker, it's physical. So what it does, it reflects the UV radiation. So your physical or mineral sunscreen, that would be like your zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And they're essentially like mirrors on your skin. So the UV radiation comes, it hits the zinc oxide and it just bounces away. So it, and it actually doesn't um, have that heat dissipation. And that could be relevant sometimes, let's say someone has rosacea um, and we know that heat can exacerbate rosacea. So there, you wouldn't wanna wear a chemical one cause that's just gonna make your face a little warmer which can worsen things. Or if someone has melasma, for instance. Melasma is when you get like those dark patches forehead or somewhere on the face, on the lip or cheeks, um, a physical blocker is better. Um, in terms of what SPF to wear, um, usually I'll say, you know, summertime SPF 50 or above for the face, 30 for the body. Once you get above 50, the number doesn't matter too much. And the reason is what the numbers mean is let's say something's SPF 30. SPF 30 means you're getting 1 30th the amount of sun. So if you're getting 1 30th, that's blocking 96.666%. So you're only getting 3.3%, which is pretty good. You go to SPF 50 and you're thinking, whoa, well, that's almost, you know, one and a half, almost double as high. But what's one over 50? You know, 2%. So it's blocking 98%. So SPF 30 to 50, you're only going from 96.6 to 98. So it's actually not a huge difference. And then you say, okay, well, what about my SPF 60 or higher? Well, SPF 60, it's like 98.3%. So you've only gone up like 0.3, it's minimal. So once you get above 50, the number doesn't matter too much. And so that's what I'd recommend summertime in terms of the numbers, 50 face, 30 body. And in the winter, you probably don't need SPF 50. I mean, there's no harm in going with the higher number, but I mean, an SPF 30, sometimes even a 15, you know, if you're in the dead of winter and it's minus 10 out, you know, SPF 15, 30 is, that's enough. Great. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have a question here. Do you also provide recommendations on makeup products that can cover certain imperfections that can't always be fixed? otherwise? That's a good question. Yeah. So usually that would be with one of our um, skin consultants with Kelly or Petra. Um, 
you probably don't want me giving you makeup recommendations. <laughs> makeup but uh yeah no we, we can give some makeup recommendations i mean we don't sell makeup here it's not sephora in the sense that you know we don't have all those lines of stuff but we can definitely give some recommendations yes um i'll ask another question so i tend to break out on my chin i think it's hormonal and so um i find as it's healing there's kind of like a little bit of discoloration so do you have a recommendation or how to sort of ongoing treat that? Yeah, well, first I'd say is come in and see us so we can treat the acne, right? Because it'll fade away, you know, we can treat it, but if you're still getting acne, it's just an ongoing issue. So come in, we can treat it more with the medication um, to prevent the acne in the first place. But someone who already has the spots or even if we're treating it and you're still getting some acne, um, Usually it's, it's more what we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, not so much scarring. So often people come in and say, I got all the scarring on my face. I'm like, well, the good news is it's not scarring. You don't have indents or divots or these ice pick scars in your face, but there is a reddish or brownish spot. And the problem is um, often that I'll see when the acne is not controlled is it'll fade away, but it can take a couple months or longer. But by the time it fades away, then you already have another one. And so there's always mm -hmm. something there. So in terms of treatment, there's a few options for that. If it's more of a brownish pigment, usually I'll prescribe a hydroquinone based cream. So that's more of a bleaching cream, a lightening cream. Um, if it's more for the redness, there's different medications we can prescribe too. Sometimes azelaic acid, finacea works well for that. And then even just um, laser. So if you do have like a lot of, you know, a lot of areas of redness, it's persistent, doing IPL, that'll work well to target the redness. Great, that's actually very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have uh, some more questions that have come in through the chat. Um, Dr. Levy, do you want to uh, pick and choose at that or I can, I can read them out to you? Um, um, here, so I'll read, I'll just go from the top. So Cindy, okay. um, so do you offer any body, so I'll just read the question in case people don't have the chat open. So. Do you offer any body treatments for skin on the legs or arms or products that'll be helpful in tightening fine wrinkles lines to keep legs and arms looking good and more youthful? Yeah, so it depends on the degree of, um, you know, of the, you know, the, of the lines or wrinkles. Um, we have two ultrasound tightening devices. So we have cool sculpting. That's a little more for stubborn fat, um, but we have a device called um, Althera. And what Althera is, it uses ultrasound. So it's, it's like, a, it's not a laser per se, but there's no needles or cutting or anything like that. And what that does, it tightens the skin. So that's actually indicated as a non-surgical facelift. So it, it works well, you know, for face, but these devices can also be used on the arms or legs to help tighten the skin. Sometimes we'll use our radio frequency device too, and that can work well, you know, for the fine lines and wrinkles in those areas. Um, in terms of the masks and so the next question, um, masks and mask knee, actually, I think I wrote or was interviewed for an article on this recently. So feel free to, I don't know where that's posted. You know what? You, I'm going to pull that you, I'll just pull that link up and I'll put it yeah. in the chat. It's a great article. Yes. That uh, yeah. you talked all about. So, so little things with that don't become an anti-masker. Um, that's number one. Um, and we got to wear them when we have to. So what I recommend for that is one, make sure your mask is clean. Like don't reuse your mask and, you know, like just make sure to wash it daily um, or if it's a disposable one, um, but make sure to wash it daily sort of thing, especially, especially if you're wearing makeup and it's getting a little bit dirtier in there. Um, cleanse your face. Um, that should be done, you know, maybe a couple times a day, morning and evening. Other things you can do using a retinol cream that can help decrease oiliness. And then if you actually are breaking out and getting acne or perioral dermatitis, then there's prescription medications there. You can just come in and see us. And depending on how things look, um, there's different creams or pills that can help with that. Um, in terms of the next one, online store. Yeah, we can do, yeah, we can do delivery. I'm pretty sure we have the online store. Yeah, and yeah. I'll just put that link too, actually. Yeah. And then you okay. can also, 
you know, in terms of, you know, to phone in, you know, you can phone in to, to actually make the order. But if you have questions too, you can chat with one of our skincare consultants and they can give you information for all that. So I just put the mistaken for maskne, which talks about that perioral dermatitis as well, um, link there. And that link, um, when you get to that, that's a great source for lots of articles that um, our experts at MedCan have contributed to. And then the next one there, refinedbymedcan.com forward slash collections. Um, that is where you can shop everything. It's by category. You can also shop by brand or what the um, item is. Like, you know, when we were just looking for products to suggest for this webinar, I just typed in glycolic acid and then the products that have that ingredient in them come up. So um, that's a great, it has a great search function. Awesome. Thanks for putting that out. All right, well, I will just share my screen once more just to talk about um, a couple of our upcoming webinars that we have. Um, so actually, yes, here's so just a couple other resources. So you can book a consultation at Refine by calling the number there on the screen. You can shop for the products uh, with the link I just shared with you. Um, and then yes, um, we also have another article by Dr. Levy about how your skincare changes as you age. So different, you know, when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and older, just a different couple things you start to see, which you probably everybody out there is experiencing, um, and how you can kind of treat that with just a couple of different uh, types of ingredients and products and things like that. And we have two future webinars that you can sign up for now. The next one is in two weeks. It is on Tuesday, August the 10th, and it is Return to Work, Medical and Legal Experts on Potential Changes and How to Address Them. So this is great if you are um, working in HR or you are an employer, but it's also really great if you are, you know, your employer has asked you to go back to work and you're wondering about just how things are going to going to work. So that's um, the link there. It's, uh, you, you might want to write down um, just those numbers at the bit.ly, but all of these things are really easy to find because if you go to medcan.com and you could just go to listen, watch, and learn, we put all of the webinars up there with an easy link. Um, and then any webinars that you've missed, you can watch on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash medcan live well. This uh, webinar will be up there as well later today. Um, so you can rewatch it or you can check it out on Facebook. And then another um, webinar we have, which I think will be really fantastic for any parents out there. Um, just wondering how this is all gonna work. It's back to school with Dr. Janice Weiss. So um, Janice is the director of youth and child services at MedCan. And she is gonna share her tips for sort of preparing your children for whatever you've decided. If you're deciding that they're going to go back or you know, you're going to homeschool them or some hybrid and um, just sort of the mental behind that because it has been a year and it, it looks a lot different. I know, you know, I have, I have now a son in high school and one, you know, almost going and then one who really just started school. So he only knew like, sometimes I go and sometimes I don't. And sometimes we always have to wear a mask. And so I think it will be quite different to experience school, how we all knew school. Um, so I think this is a great webinar if you're interested in this topic. Um, all right, well, um, oh, wait, I'm just gonna see, did we have, um, yeah, okay, that's it. We've seen all the questions. So, okay, so thank you, Dr. Levy. This has been so fantastic. Um, I really appreciate your expertise in this topic. Yeah, thanks for having me. And if anyone has any other questions, I mean, we're here, here every day pretty much. So come on by, happy to see you. Perfect. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.